In this video, we'll review the major structures that make up the brainstem and look at their functions. The brainstem is located between the diencephalon and the spinal cord. And you can see it colored here. It's composed of three major regions, the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. The brainstem is often thought of as the most primitive part of the brain. And it's necessary for survival. I'm going to write out the major functions of the brainstem and list their functions. So feel free to grab a piece of paper and take notes with me. The first major structure that makes up the brainstem is the midbrain. The midbrain is the superior most part of the brainstem. It's important to note that there is a canal that runs through the midbrain known as the cerebral aqueduct. Now the cerebral aqueduct is a passageway for cerebral spinal fluid. So you might want to put that in parentheses. This is how cerebral spinal fluid gets from the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle of the brain. So let's look at the midbrain in this image here. This is the diencephalon up here. The midbrain is shown in yellow here, as well as these two dots in the back here. In the middle of the diencephalon is where you find the third ventricle. Cerebral spinal fluid will flow down through the cerebral aqueduct, this little canal right here, and flow into the fourth ventricle down here. Now from this image here, you could see that there's major areas that make up the midbrain. The area shown in yellow here is known as the cerebral peduncle, and it's located anterior to the cerebral aqueduct. And then you can see that posterior to the cerebral aqueduct are these bumps located back here, which also make up the midbrain. They're called the superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus. So let's list their functions here. Now remember, we're gonna use the cerebral aqueduct to kind of orient ourselves around the midbrain when we're looking at that mid-sagittal cut through the midbrain. So first, let's look at one of the main regions of the midbrain, and that is the cerebral peduncle. The term peduncle means stem, and that can help you kind of remember what it does because it's actually connecting the diencephalon to the pons, so the, to the rest of the brainstem. So the cerebral peduncle is the white matter tracts that are anterior to the cerebral aqueduct, as you can see here. Okay, so this area here is composed of white matter tracts, so in other words, axons running up and down the brainstem. So again, the cerebral peduncle is connecting the upper brain regions, or in other words, the diencephalon and cerebrum, to the brainstem. And it's transmitting at the same time motor and sensory information up and down the brainstem. And so remember, it's connecting the diencephalon to the brainstem. And on top of that, it's transmitting, because it's made up of axons, it's transmitting motor and sensory information up and down the brainstem. I guess that would be down and up the brainstem. Now, collectively, the superior colliculi and the inferior colliculi 
This area posterior to the cerebral aqueduct is known as the tectum. So we will list that next. So that you can think of the tectum as being the roof of the midbrain. So again, it is the area posterior to the cerebral aqueduct. And the tectum consists of two major structures. And that is the superior cochlei. So this, these are upper, an upper pair of bumps that control our visual reflex. So I always remember this because superior colliculi starts with S, and I always think of S for seeing. So again, this region of our brain is controlling our visual reflexes. So these are reflexes that we do not have control of. So this could be like orienting to visual stimuli, but also it could be, um, mean things like how our pupils respond to um, changes in light intensity and things like that. So these are visual reflexes, again, that we don't necessarily have control over. The other part of the tectum is known as the inferior colliculi. So these are a lower pair of bumps that control our auditory reflexes. So again, these are auditory reflexes that we can't really control. So this could be how uh, we respond to sounds. Okay, when we hear a sound and we orient towards that sound, that's an auditory reflex. But also there are changes that happen within our ear when we hear like really loud sounds. If we hear a really loud sound, our ears can try to like dampen that sound. And those type of reflexes are things that we don't really have control over. Okay, so looking here, you can see again, the superior colliculi are superior to the inferior colliculi down here. This is what it would look like at a mid-sagittal view, but if we actually look at a posterior view of the midbrain, so we're looking at the back of the brainstem, we can see the colliculi even better. So here on the left image is looking at a human brain, and here we can see the two upper bumps of the superior colliculi. Again, those are controlling our visual reflexes. On the bottom here, we can see the two inferior colliculi, which are controlling our auditory reflexes. Now, again, if you're doing a brain dissection in an anatomy physiology class, you're not usually looking at a human brain, but you can also see the colliculi on a sheep brain. So here is a sheep brain. Here's the cerebrum on the top here. Here is the cerebellum down here. So I'm looking at a posterior view of the brain. I've separated the cerebellum from the cerebrum so that I can look at the midbrain right here. What you see up here at the top is actually, that is the pineal gland and you're looking at it from the back. And then these two really large humps here are the superior colliculi. And then the two smaller bumps down here are the inferior colliculi. So you can see that these structures are present on humans as well as other mammals. Now let's see if you can locate the major structures of the midbrain by looking at these mid-sagittal views of the human brain on the left and the sheep brain on the right. Can you guess what A is in each of these images? A is the superior colliculus. So you're just looking at one of those bumps. So again, here, I'm outlining the superior colliculus here. And then it's really big in the sheep and it kind of makes sense. Sheep are prey animals, right? They're gonna need to have pretty good visual reflexes if they're looking out for predators coming. So that's the bump there. B is pointing to the smaller bump here and this little bump right here. That is the inferior colliculus. C is pointing to the region right here, the anterior region or the front region of the midbrain. 
and that would be the cerebral peduncle. And then D is pointing to the passageway that goes through the midbrain, which would be the cerebral aqueduct. Now there is one more important structure that's found in the midbrain that we want that I want to go over, and that is known as the substantia nigra. Now this is found deep within the midbrain. Nigra means black, substantia means substance. So this means black substance. And this is actually nuclei, so clusters of neuronal cell bodies. That's what nuclei means. So it's nuclei deep in the midbrain that appears black. So what is the function of the substantia nigra? Well, this structure secretes the neurotransmitter dopamine. This dopamine is really important because it communicates with the basal ganglia structures and therefore helps to control voluntary movements. One really important clinical application associated with the substantia nigra and the dopamine it produces is Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is associated with decreased dopamine production from the substantia nigra. So in these two images here, you can actually see the substantia nigra. Here is a transverse cross-section through the midbrain, and you can see the substantia nigra located within the midbrain here. And you can see how it's darker in color. And here is a coronal section through the brain. This whole region here, so this is cutting about here and here. So that region here is the midbrain. And notice this dark area here and here. That is the substantia nigra. Next, let's look at the pons. The pons is located right below the midbrain. And if you look at an inferior view of the brain, so on the left we have a human brain here, we can see the pons very distinctly. It's this large bulge. And then in the sheep brain, you can also see the pons here. So the pons is a second major structure of the brainstem, and it is a bulging structure anterior to the cerebellum. Let's look at some of the important structures that make up the pons. First off, we have what we call the cerebellar peduncles. Not to be confused with the cerebral peduncle that we just talked about in the midbrain. So the cerebellar peduncle is referring to the cerebellum. So the cerebellar peduncles are white matter tracts connecting the brainstem to the cerebellum. And you can see them located right here. So here is the cerebellar peduncles connecting the cerebellum here to the brainstem. Another important structure found with deep within the pons, so the pons highlighted in green in this image, are nuclei that are important for regulating our breathing. And so we call this the pontine respiratory group. And so they're going to send signals down to the medulla down here, which then sends signals out to our muscles that control breathing. So the second major structure and second major function of the pons is the pontine respiratory group.
So the pontine respiratory group are nuclei within the pons that help control muscles used for breathing. Now the third region that makes up the brainstem is the medulla oblongata. And it is the inferior most part of the brainstem. That means it connects the brainstem to the spinal cord. So let's look at some important structures and functions of the medulla oblongata. Okay, so first we have what we call the pyramids. The pyramids are vertical ridges running along the medulla oblongata that contain motor tracts. One important thing to note is that these tracts cross over, or in other words, decussate to the opposite side of the body. We call this decussation of the pyramids, and this is really important because this is why the right side of our brain controls muscle movement on the left side of our body, and the left side of our brain controls muscle movement on the right side of the body, and it's because of this decussation or this crossing over of the motor tracks. So if we look here at this image, what is shown in blue up here is the thalamus, and then what we see in red is the midbrain, What's in green is the pons, and then what's in yellow is the medulla oblongata. These two ridges that you see here are the pyramids. And right here, you can see the motor tracks will go down, and then they'll decussate and cross over to the other side of the body. The medulla oblongata also contains really important nuclei. And these nuclei are really important in regulating and controlling autonomic nervous system function. So we often call these nuclei the autonomic nuclei. So let's list these important autonomic nuclei over here on our note sheet. So we have the autonomic nuclei. Again, these are gray matter masses that control movement of our internal organs. So in other words, control our autonomic nervous system. So there are three major autonomic nuclei within the medulla oblongata that I think that you should know. Uh, the first one is a cardiac center which is going to control heart rate. The second one is known as the vasomotor center. Vaso is referring to vessel. And then motor means movement. So this is controlling the movement of your blood vessels. So therefore, it's controlling your blood pressure. And then finally, we also have a respiratory center within the medulla oblongata, just like we had in the pons. So we call this the medullary respiratory group. So it's going to work together with the pontine respiratory group in the pons to regulate the depth and the rate of breathing. And one other thing I want to note is that the medulla oblongata also contains reflex centers that trigger vomiting, sneezing, swallowing, and coughing. Okay, so let's do a quick summary of the brainstem. So the brainstem is composed of the midbrain, 
the pons, and the medulla oblongata. The midbrain is the superior most part of the brainstem. It consists of the cerebral peduncle, which is the region located anterior to the cerebral aqueduct. And the cerebral peduncle is really important because it contains white matter tracts that send motor signals down the brainstem and sensory signals up the brainstem. On the other side of the cerebral aqueduct, we have what's called the tectum or the roof of the midbrain. And it contains four bumps on the back of it. The two upper bumps are known as the superior colliculi, which control our visual reflexes. The two lower bumps are the inferior colliculi, which control our auditory reflexes. And then deep within the midbrain, we have the substantia nigra, which is important because it secretes dopamine. And dopamine is really important in helping to control our voluntary movements. Damage to the substantia nigra and therefore decreased production of dopamine is associated with Parkinson's disease. And then below the midbrain, we have the pons. The pons is very visible because it kind of bulges out. Some important structures associated with the pons is the cerebellar peduncles, which attaches the pons to the cerebellum. And then we also have deep within the pons, the pontine respiratory group, which helps to control the muscles used for breathing. And then the last part of the brainstem is the medulla oblongata, and it has some important structures such as the pyramids, which are vertical ridges that contain motor tracts that decussate or cross over to the other side of the body. Then deep within the medulla oblongata, we have the autonomic nuclei, which control things such as our heart rate with the cardiac center, the vasomotor center, which controls blood pressure. And then we also have the medullary respiratory group, which controls breathing. And then also in the medulla is the reflex centers that trigger vomiting, sneezing, swallowing, and coughing.